What's up guys, Iovo here and welcome to a brand new video on the channel. In today's video, we're going to be teaching you how to make an advanced banner. In this case, it's a GTA banner, but of course you can rebrand it to make any themed banner. Now this is a collaboration video with King Tuts Bro, so be sure to check out his channel. The links will be down below in the description and be sure to smash the like button down below. And with that being said, let's get started. Alright, so to begin, you want to go ahead and download the YouTube banner template. The link for the download will be in the description along with all the other download links so you guys can follow along with the tutorial. So you're going to have this right here. You're going to have bars right on top of everything, which is what you want. And then from here, you're going to have uh, not the characters. That's going to be separate. I just don't want to do the thing all over again. But you're going to have the, uh, the uh, background here. It should just be like dark gray. So you're going to go ahead and just pick out a background. I just chose this one from Grand Theft Auto 5. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that and paste it onto the background here and you want to place this in between the actual bars and the background which is dark gray so you want to go ahead and kind of resize this so on your PC or Mac uh, depending what you're using uh, the keys will be a little bit different but I'll try to showcase the shortcuts on the screen so you want to go ahead and hold down alt or option on a Mac and shift to scale it up or down and keep the proportions the same. So once you've done this, you want to go ahead and create a new layer right on top of the actual background. And you want to go ahead and rename as you go so you guys can stay organized. So right now I have the background just renamed to BG for background. And then this one is going to be a gradient. So of course you guys can make any sort of gradient that you guys want, but the first thing you want to do is go ahead and select the gradient tool. And as you can see, we already have a preset one, which is a blue gradient, but we're going to be making a yellow one so you guys can see how it's done and you can make your own gradient from it. So the first step of course is to open up the gradient tool. So what you want to do is actually select a gradient that goes from foreground to background or lighter to darker. So we're going to select the white to black one because it clearly goes from foreground to background. And then you want to click on the very left stop, which is going to be the lighter side. And you want to choose a very light yellow, which is going to start off the gradient. Once you're done, just press OK and click on the stop on the right side and select a darker color. So this would be more of a darker yellow or a darker orange. And once you do that, your gradient is going to be created and you're going to have a very nice yellow gradient. Now, once you are done, you just want to click OK. Make sure you have the gradient tool selected and make sure you're on the gradient layer. And then you want to hold shift and move the cursor up a little bit to create your gradient. And then to make the gradient more transparent, you wanna make sure the layer is selected, then go to blending options and select the screen option so you can actually see the background as well. Now, if you guys also want to change the gradient, you can press control or command if you're on Mac and then press the colon key. So control colon or command colon. And then you wanna go ahead and click hold shift and then click a bit lower down. And as you can see, it changes the gradient. So the perfect place to do it is right at the top of the actual image. So you want to make sure you have control colon selected. You want to click, you want to hold shift and you want to make sure you click once again. And as you can see, this gradient will be created. So once we have our gradient done, the next step is to add the character. So as you can see, these are the GTA 5 characters that you can find off Google. Now, of course, you can add any characters you like, but once you actually found, find the image you want to use, you want to open it in a new layer, double click on the background layer and name this layer anything you want so that you can actually edit it. Now to remove the characters from the background, we are going to use the pen tool. So what you have to do is go ahead and press P to access the pen tool and then trace around the actual character by clicking and dragging to make curves. And of course, you can press Alt to reset the pen tool as well. This is a complicated tool so you guys can look up the tutorials on how to use it or find other ways to remove the images from the background but we are going to use the pen tool and going to cut out Michael from the actual background. All right guys so I have finished selecting Michael's character so once you have done that you want to make sure you're actually on the layer. Right click and go to make selection and you're gonna have the make selection window. From here, you want to go ahead and change the feather radius to 0.5 pixels just so it feathers it so it's not too harsh of an edge. And go ahead and click OK. So once you've done that, press Command J or Control J on a PC to make a copy of the selection. So you should now have Michael by himself on the empty layer, the transparent layer. Go ahead and copy that by pressing either Alt or Option and dragging onto the other template. Or you can go ahead and press Command A and Command C or Control A and Control C to copy the character and just paste it onto here. So you can do that very easily by pressing Alt or Option and just drag this and drag that right on top. And he should be right on top so it's not disabled. So you guys now have this right here. Now of course you can do any character you guys want 
but uh, I just selected all of the characters in this picture here. So that does take a little bit of time, but once you guys have it all set and done, you should have something like this, okay? Now what I've done is I went ahead and just made a copy of Michael DeSanta. So right now I added some effects. So I currently have, this one is currently, it doesn't have any effects, but I just added a drop shadow. To add a drop shadow, it's very easy. Just click on the actual layer, go to layer style, go to drop shadow. And then from here, you want to go ahead and change the blend mode to multiply the opacity to 23%. The angle, you can change that to however you want. The distance, I put 9, spread 6, and the size 8. And I just kept everything the same. And the cool thing is you can actually make a copy of this and scale it up. And to do that, it's very simple. Just, you know, uh, press Command J on the actual layer you have. Or just click and drag onto this one right here. And it will create a copy. And then from here, you're going to have this right here. And that just adds a really nice little touch to the background. Uh, so it doesn't look too boring. And what I did is I just made the exact same copy. And I just went to the blend mode and I changed it to screen. And I lowered the opacity to 60%. Now if you keep it at 100, it's going to be like this. And it's going to be too harsh. So I don't really like that effect. And I did that to each of the characters. I went with Trevor. I made a copy and I added this effect here. As you can see, which is really, really cool. It just adds a nice style to the overall banner. Now I added Franklin, of course, and I did the same thing just like so. And I kept the uh, opacity on the copies at 60%, which is what we want. So we're going to add some really cool effects to the background. And I added a texture. Again, the link will be in the description so you guys can download it. So what you want to do is go ahead and open up this texture. This is going to be a free one. It's the Free Texture Friday. And you want to go ahead and open it up. Then you want to press Control a to select it, Control c to copy it. Of course, if you're on Mac, it's Command. And then press Command or Control v in the actual document so you can paste the actual texture. Now once it's in, you can press Control t to actually open up the editor and resize this image by pressing Shift, or you can drag it around to fit. And once you're done, just press the check mark. So the next step is to contrast the texture so it looks really nice with the gradient. So if you had a dark gradient, you want to make the texture light and invert it by pressing Control i or Command i and as you can see, it inverts it. Now if you have a light gradient like this yellow gradient, you want to make sure that the, gradient, that the texture is actually dark. So we're going to keep it the way that it actually is. And then you want to go on Blending Options and select either multi apply our overlay but in this case we're going to select the soft light option and then you want to make sure that the actual texture layer is above the gradient layer and once it's on top you want to change the opacity of the layer to about 40 or 50 percent and changing the opacity will allow the actual gradient to still shine through and everything will look complete so now we want to go ahead and add the splatter effects that i added if you right click and you go to the actual brushes and you go down and you select this one, I believe it was this one. So create a new layer, okay? And then I'm gonna name this texture and I'm gonna name this one shapes. And I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of make this a little bit smaller. Uh, I'm gonna click and you wanna make sure that the foreground color is set to white and then click and you should have that just like that. Now you could of course change the blend mode which is what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna go with these right here, it looks best. So you can do lighten and lower the opacity which is what I like to do. So now we want to go ahead and add some splatter effects. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new name for this. If I can type splatter, okay. Go back to the brushes, go down and select any of these right here. Now you want to go ahead and make sure you install them onto Photoshop. It's very easy. Once you download it, open it, and you want to go ahead and open up the file. It should just automatically install it into Photoshop. It's like a, a Photoshop file. So once you've done that, you want to go ahead and select any of the splatter effects that you want. The ones I like to use is this one here, right here, 2471. Again, keep the foreground color white and just kind of click and you should have that really nice splatter effect. And I like to change it uh, just like that. And I'm going to click here. So now you can see how everything is looking. And by the way, I also went to the characters and I moved them closer together so we could have space in the middle for the text. So to make the text, the first thing you want to do is create a new layer and we're going to name this layer the text layer. And then you want to type out whatever text you want using the text tool. So first we're going to type out king and we're going to use the font Arial Black. So the first thing we're going to do is change the color of the font to black and then make it a bit larger so it actually is visible for you guys. 
And then once you have your text created, you want to go ahead and resize it and make sure that it is properly aligned with the entire file so everything looks complete even and everything also looks proper so you can add more text further on. Now to make a copy of the text, all you want to do is press Alt, Shift, and drag down. And if you're on Mac, it's Option, Shift, and you're going to create a copy of this text and we're going to go ahead and make it say gaming instead. Now, once we have that, we're going to make it a bit smaller so everything looks proper. And then you want to go ahead and select both layers by pressing the first layer, pressing shift, pressing the second layer, and then you want to convert the following text to a smart object once you have it moved to where you want it to be. So once we have our text properly aligned and we have both the layers selected, to make this actually a smart object, the first thing you have to do is rasterize a layer. So right click on the two layers and then click on rasterize layer. Afterwards, what you can do is right click once again, convert the text into a smart object. Now, once this works and our text is in one layer, you wanna press Control T and then right click on the text and click on the perspective change. And then holding Shift then Alt or Shift and Option on a Mac, you wanna drag the top right corner of the text and as you can see, see it actually changes the perspective and gives it a really cool effect now we have to add our social media icons and i have the actual social media icons and everything in a pack provided by rated so shout outs to rated designs as well do you want to go ahead and copy the twitter or whatever social media links you guys want to use uh in this case i'm going to do twitter so i'm gonna hold down alter option and click and just drag that on here and drag that below this and i think that's the only thing i want uh, i don't want any i don't want to add anything more just so it's not too complicated but you can if you want but we're gonna go ahead and close that so once you've uh, done that you want to go ahead and go onto the twitter layer double click on that layer and go on to color overlay and we're gonna just do black so it matches the logo you, you guys can also add a logo if you want you don't have to do text and to speed things up i could just right click and go to copy layer style Go to Instagram and paste the layer style and now you should have the same effect there. Next thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and zoom in and rescale this and make it smaller. So and just scale that down just a little bit but not too much. So once you've done that you want to go ahead and kind of put it wherever you want. Now for the text I used Arial Black and I'm just going to go ahead and type in King Tuts Pro for my Twitter and I'm gonna go ahead and make that quite small just like this and scale this up so it matches the size of the Twitter logo. Now you could of course make the the actual social icon the uh, Instagram logo bigger if you want that's up to you but uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just scale it down so it matches the text because you know OCD kills sometimes so I'm gonna go on to the actual Instagram logo and make that smaller so it's kind of the same here that is good and then to make sure that this is centered with the logo click on the instagram layer and the instagram icon layer as well which is this one and then go to the top and select the horizontal align and then you want to do the same thing with the twitter uh, logo as well so I'm going to do that as well. So now they should be centered. So now we have that and we're pretty much finished with everything. And of course you could add a whole bunch of stuff. You can do a drop shadow, which is what I did. I just lowered the opacity and uh, quite a bit. And then you could of course add a gradient and change that too. Now the last thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and change the splatter, which is this here. You want to go ahead and change that to overlay or screen or whatever you guys want. But I just do overlay just because it looks nice and it kind of goes, it's like a transparent look pretty much. So it's not white. And there we go. Our banner is complete. Just be sure to save the image as a JPEG or PNG. But that's about it for this video, guys. Remember to check out King Tuts Pro. The link will be down below in the description. But that's about it. If you guys did like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And as always, thanks for watching. My name is Iovo and I'm signing out.